Good morning. May it please the court, my name is Mandy Mills from Legal Services of Greater Miami on behalf of the appellant, Yanele Morales. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to reserve two minutes for rebuttal. Perfect, Ms. Mills. Thank, Thank you. you. The commission's decision that Ms. Morales was fired for misconduct must be reversed because it is both unsupported by competent substantial evidence and is erroneous as a matter of law. There's no competent substantial evidence to support the finding that Ms. Mer that Ms. Morales refused the instruction of a supervisor by knowingly going to the wrong position on the work line. Will you speak up, please? please. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. Um, Mr. Guerra's testimony that Ms. Morales felt it was okay to decline to do the action is insufficient, and there's no other evidence to support this finding. However, even if there is competent substantial evidence that Ms. Morales knowingly went to the wrong spot on the work line, this court, uh, Ms. Morales is still eligible for benefits because this court has held, and recently so in the Delby case, that a single incident of insubordination is not misconduct and is instead an isolated incident of poor judgment. The only time that, is, and that a single incident of insubordination has been held to be misconduct is when there's more than poor judgment involved, such as when there's an unreasonable or flagrant or obdurate refusal of a valid or reasonable work order. Those are the kind of circumstances that are present in the cases that the commission cites to where the employees were fired for much more egregious conduct. Those employees were fired after multiple warnings, after threats of suspension, threats of termination, after unreasonably refusing work orders, but we don't have those kind of uh, facts in Ms. Morales' case. Ms. Mills, let me ask you a question because I, I read the uh, transcript and it, it was a little confusing. So I just want to get the facts, uh, uh, understand the facts. My understanding is that she was uh, transferred to the third shift. Yes. Okay. Now, from her testimony, and again, it's very confusing because obviously there was a translator and it's, it's difficult to, to figure out exactly what's going on, but it seems that she said even though she didn't want to do it, she did what she was supposed to do. That's correct. That she, it says, I just said that I didn't want to, but I never refused, and I did it. So that's my understanding. There's not, nothing from the employer saying that she, she was crying, and I understand that she was crying, and perhaps she was complaining a lot, but there isn't any evidence from the employer that she, in fact, did not do what she was supposed to do. That's correct. She testified multiple times that she always um, – perform the instructions of her bosses, that she never refused to work that shift, that she always went to the usual location on the line where she was sent to go. There's nothing indicating that she failed to do anything and at all. And the main problem, what Mr. Gutierrez, was it Mr. No, Mr. Morales <coughs> uh, or Guerra kept uh, testifying to was the fact that she kept crying. And I guess she was inconsolable, but that there wasn't really any testimony from him that she didn't do what she was supposed to do other than the, the crying. That's correct. I mean, she did cry a couple times, but crying is not misconduct. Even the referee held that being overly emotional doesn't uh, normally require a finding of her, misconduct. How about her statement that it's okay if a subordinate employee such as she was uh, disregards her superior's instructions? I'm sorry, it, Your Honor. May you, uh, you? Her statements that it was okay if a subordinate employee such as she was disregarded and failed to refuse to fail uh, to follow the instructions of a superior well she never I mean, that sounds like insubordination which is misconduct the testimony about that was from mr guerra and he merely stated she felt it was okay to decline to do the action but he never said that she said she felt it was okay. He never said that she admitted to him that she refused to decline to do the action. That was merely his interpretation of a conversation he had with her um, about complaints she had with, uh, with the employer after she was already fired. Um, so, that, so Mr. Guerra did not witness the incident? That's correct. He, did, he worked for a temp agency, and Ms. Uh, Morales was employed by that temp agency but placed but, at but work. But Mr. So Guerra had a conversation with her after the incident. Right? And after the incident, in that conversation, um, Aguero testified to what was in that conversation. But so there was an admission against interest that's admissible. Well, the way it's. But, but, yeah. what, but what he said was um, that her, in the conversation, that she said that the person was her supervisor, a lady by the name of Dalchis, had instructed her to do something, and she felt that the person had spoken to her in an incorrect way. 
referee said, okay, go ahead, sorry. Then, then Mr. Guerra said she felt it was okay to decline to do the action. Was there any testimony that she said that she felt it was okay to decline to do the action? There was no testimony that said that. That was his interpretation of a conversation they had. Is there any testimony that she actually did decline to do the action? There was no testimony that said she declined to do the action. Nobody from Merck was present to testify at the hearing that she actually declined to do the action. We have no firsthand testimony at all. Um, and now she testified at the hearing herself. Ms. Ms. Morales did testify herself, yes. And what did she say about it? Did she say that she declined? She when asked about it, she said she never told Mr. Guerra that she felt it was okay to, to decline to do the action. And she actually testified that she did do the action that was requested of her, which was to go rotate. She said the, her supervisor sent her to rotate, and I did. She said, I started at this place where we usually rotated. And that was the testimony of her, and that's all we have. And, and I think the transcript reads, um, the referee asking uh, Ms. Morales, did you tell Mr. Guerra that you thought it was okay to refuse an instruction from Dalchis? And she answers, no, ma'am. I didn't say anything about the instruction that Mrs. Dalchis gave me. She sent me to rotate, and I did. Now, is there anything in the record contradicting Ms. Morales' direct testimony on that point? There's absolutely nothing in the record that contradicts that testimony, Your Honor. It's, it's uncontroverted and unrebutted. Um, she was the only witness to the incident that testified at the hearing. Yes, she was, Your Honor. But Guerra testified about a conversation she had with Ms. Morales, but Guerra doesn't seem to say that Morales admitted that she disobeyed an order or... Right. That's absolutely right, Your Honor. I mean, Guerra, so, Guerra testified that he was there at some point during the facility when she was crying and the supervisor asked him to please talk to her in a separate room, but that did not have anything to do with the original incident dealing with... Um, the uh, female supervisor, Dechelle. No, that was on a different day where he was just touring the facility. After her shift was over, he ran into her and asked her how things were going. Right. And she started and, to cry. And then she started to cry. But Ms. Mills, would you like to save some uh, time for rebuttal and we can hear from Mr. Gutierrez? Yes, Your Honor. Thank I'm you. Sorry, my time. Thanks. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, may it please the Court. Uh, I'm actually Thomas Persley with the Commission. Good I filed morning. a notice of substitution of counsel on uh, July 24th okay. of this year. Uh, in this case, it is certainly clear that there are, there, when it comes to insubordination, there is a degree of uh, insubordination that is acceptable and not found to be misconduct, and a degree that is found to be misconduct. Okay, can I and, just uh, ask you, if, if, counsel, if you don't mind? Is there any evidence that insubordination actually occurred? We have the, the only person who was present at when the insubordination took place testified that she did not disobey an order. So well, where is the evidence that she did disobey an order? And, and obviously an admission again, I, the only evidence would be Guerra saying, I had a conversation with her, and in that conversation she admitted to insubordination. Yes. If you read the Where would that be? You know, I didn't. I didn't see that admission that that by Morales <clears throat> that she actually disobeyed an order. Well, if you if you continue on the record on page 103, if you continue what he says, he does go on to say after she said it, she felt it was okay to decline to do the action. Okay. Now the referee was Guerra testifying that Morales said she said it was okay, or was Guerra giving his subjective reaction to? The conversation. In other words, was, was he testifying this is what she said, or was this Guerra saying, as I looked at her, my perception was she felt it was okay? I mean, Based on the on inference that the referee obviously made in her findings, I would assume she's inferring that he was talking about this was the conversation that they were having. Um, as, as I've read this too, it's not fairly, cons I mean, it's not obvious on the face. But the referee is the trier of fact and can make an inference based on the testimony right, that he's counsel, providing. But, but, but you understand, obviously, we're reading this transcript cold. We don't have the witnesses before us, and, and it's clearly not um, a, a transcript that uh, you can decipher and say that, in fact, it says what you want it to say, because it does not. 
And, and we're, we're relying on the referee being the trier of fact when it comes to evidence. And the evidence in this case, the referee heard the testimony. After hearing the testimony, if you, read, if you continue to read on with what he says, he says that there was something involving instructions on the line and a change of position. When right, you take but, that but Mr. Guerra had the ability to cross-examine her. And when uh, Ms. Morales testifies, uh, in, in reference to a question from the referee, it says, uh, did you tell Mr. Guerra that you thought it was okay to refuse an instruction from Dalchez Morales? No, ma'am, I did not. I didn't say anything about the instruction that Ms. Dalchez gave me. She sent me to rotate, and I did. So that's well, a very well, it, clear it, statement. That's on that, page that's, uh, That is true, Your Honor. There's also a, a credibility determination in this case. So we have, we have the employer, Mr. Guerra, saying that we had this conversation the claimant saying, no, I didn't say that to him. But if even you read on, so, so in that point, you have to give it to the employer. If you go on to read what Morales says, and I, I assume there was some translation, and it, how you read this, it is very complicated. I mean, it's interweaved with translation, the interruptions. But when she goes on, she says, I did do that. But there was something about she, the lady wasn't satisfied with the rotation, and I asked her why. That was the usual way we rotated. So even from reading what she's saying, it seems like she started off the usual way she rotated, but this supervisor had a problem and probably instructed her, I hate to use the word probably, but instructed her to do something else. The referee could have probably developed it further, but after hearing there's a conflict in evidence between the parties, she decided to, decide, uh, to hold with the employer and what the employer's witness testified, saying, we did have a conversation. She admitted to refusing this instruction. Well, counsel, if I may, um, if there's a conflict in the testimony, obviously the, it, the trier of facts decision governs. But I want to focus on the, the conflict. And that's all you need to establish is a conflict in testimony. Yes. But what Mr. Guerra said was she felt it was okay to decline to do the action. So from that sentence, from that testimony, we will infer, you're asking us to infer, one, that she testified to that, and then two, this, all this says is she felt it was okay to decline the action. It, it doesn't actually say she ever declined to do an action. And meanwhile, we have Morales saying, I never declined to do an action. So and again, Gara I have a little is not concern. The, is not the um, actual supervisor in the sense on the field, the person who would really have this is like double hearsay in essence, what, what Gara is saying, because the person that would really have the information would be uh, Deschelle, who would say, yes, either she declined it or she, she gave me some attitude, but she still did it. We don't know because she didn't testify. The only person that we know that did testify was Morales, who said, well, yes, I didn't want to do it, but I did it. Where's the evidence that conflicts with Morales' direct testimony that she did not disobey an order? And I guess it's Guerra's testimony on 103. But that, that is what we're, we're relying on based on how the referee wrote her findings. And, and the key sentence there is Guerra saying, quote, she felt that it was okay to decline to do the action, end quote. That's the entire case rests on that sentence. That's it, isn't it? It's either be it's yes, either right. a fair inference from that statement that she said that that she felt that way, or it isn't. If it is a fair inference, you win. If it's not, you don't. You're correct. Right, yeah. Counsel, another thing is, I'm not even sure what this lady's job was, and I'm not even sure what order she failed to obey, and I'm not sure how that impacted her job. In other words, I, get, I infer from the, this that she works in assembly line. Is that true? That's what it appears, Your Honor. And, and based on that, with the employer's witness, Mr. Guerra, saying she was discharged for this insubordination and the constant crying on the job, where you had well, two crying on, the, April crying on the job is not misconduct. Yeah, exactly. We had, we had where on April 1st, they had a discussion about if well, the convoluted the, testimony that's out there. The, there was besides testimony the crime, regarding, it would help a lot me. if there was stuff in the record about, you know, precisely what her job was, you know, what her tasks were, 
and how whatever she did interfered with the accomplishment of the task. That, and I would agree I, with I don't that. see that here. I mean, you know, I mean, even if there was insubordination, you know, does it rise to that? And I'm not sure that was established in this record. Does it rise to the level of, you know, flagrant whatever? It, it would be helpful for us if we knew how it interfered with the job task. But again, you're not counsel below. You, you get the case as you find it, just like we do. So uh, I thank you, unless you have anything further to say to the court. No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Ms. Mills, you may have uh, two minutes for rebuttal. Thank you. Your Honor, the Commission even admits that, the, that some insubordination does not amount to misconduct. And they even admit that the record regarding her alleged admission is unclear. But given that the unemployment compensation statutes must be liberally construed in favor of claimants, you must make an inference that you have to make an inference in favor of Ms. Morales. But even if you accept the employer's testimony as is, you're still only left with Mr. Guerra's interpretation of Ms. Morales' feelings. And what you're left with is then Ms. Morales' direct testimony that she never refused the instruction of a supervisor. But moreover, this court has described three criteria that must be found uh, in order to make a finding that of misconduct whenever there's a refusal of an instruction, and that's out of the Cherry v. Flagship Airlines case. The court has to find that a work order was reasonable, that a work order was valid, and then that the employee's refusal is unreasonable. We have none of those criteria met in this case. There was no testimony establishing that the supervisor's instruction was reasonable or that it was valid, and no testimony establishing that Ms. Morales's conduct was unreasonable. And to the, contra to the contrary, we have unrebutted okay. testimony supporting that she was indeed reasonable and in going to the spot on the line that she did. The, the appeals referee also says, and this is, this is substantiated by the evidence, isn't it, that she complained about this constantly. This was a big deal to her, a very big deal. And she would not take no or yes for an answer. She had I mean, this is, if, uh, doesn't it come to a point where you can't, you, you, uh, you're not supposed to argue with your em employer forever? I mean, he's made a decision and this is it, and stop talking about it, and let alone becoming very, very upset about it, which she obviously did, too. She, you know, she was upset about her uh, new shift, um, but the complaints or the crying do not amount to misconduct. Um, well, how this, many the, times, how, yeah. how many, uh, she did it over and over, the, the referee says, I don't have to read it to you, but... Yeah. Uh, well, there's actually the only claimant continued to bring up the same issue over and over again, the transfer was temporary, in fact resulted from a promotion, and this had been explained to the claimant several times. Well, the record only supports one time where Ms. Morales actually approached the employer to complain about the job, and that's through her testimony about uh, her complaining on April 17th, and that's what she admits to. The only other times uh, that she cried was after Ms. Mr. Guerra approached her at work after her shift, and then another time she cried after the, her supervisor was berating her inhumanely on the line. Um, well, the, but the, the commission the, is conceded. The findings of fact are that on October 12th, the gun customer service supervisor was touring the facility, simply asked the claimant how she was doing. She contended that things were unfair and started crying to such a deed that the supervi a supervisor asked the, super the other supervisor to move into a different position. So on the line was her line leader. There was no one else. I mean, this is... Uh, right. So, yes, she, she started crying when he approached yes, her. Yes, we have said over job, and but, over again in various contests, uh, contexts, well, the is Ganung. Does the record indicate how many times she burst into tears? I think it was twice. Yeah. There, According to this record. Well... It might have been the, more. There were... There were three times that I, that, that I could find in the record. One where she admitted she had cried on April 17th. She cried on April 12th whenever the employer, whenever the, Mr. Guerra approached her, but she did not initiate that contact. Her work was done, shift was over, he approached her and engaged in a conversation with her and then she started to cry. It was a, it was a tough job on her. She testified that it was affecting her health. 
it's not unreasonable that she would start crying. Ms. Mills, but the, your, your time is up, so if you'd like to wrap it up, please. Okay. Thank well, you. Your Honors, there's no common and substantial evidence to support a finding of insubordination in this case, and um, we respectfully request that you reverse the finding of the commission and find Ms. Morales qualified to receive unemployment benefits. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Mills. Thank you, Council. We appreciate you uh, attending through Tallahassee. Thank you.